Truth Lies and Political Bullshit, and I'm here with my good friend Timmy. Hi, Tim. How you doing there, Sean? Good, Got Timmy. How, how you been, man? Good, good. A lot of news hit today. Yeah. How's the podcast? So far, so good. Uh, we've been streaming out as uh, quickly as we can. And, um, you know, these, these things take a lot of work. People don't realize how much work goes into doing a podcast. Not only do you got to have the equipment, you got to set up, you got to record, then you got to edit, then you got to upload onto your various different social sites. It's a lot of work. Yeah, you're, then, you're telling me, man, right? You're telling me. But no hey, it, it's a great thing to do. A lot of people love it. Uh, truth lies and political bullshit's really growing leaps and bounds. And I know the Fifth Ward is really doing well. And so I think it's exciting to say to people from the city of Cohoes that we got together and thought, hey, maybe once every two weeks, we should do a podcast and we'll call it Cohoes, the good, bad, and the ugly, right? Yeah, yeah. And we're going to host it on uh, the Fifth Ward page. Yeah. And then we'll put it on Facebook, which will lead to uh, them yep. being able to see it yep. on YouTube, on your yep. uh, Fifth Ward page, and or uh, on Rumble, right? Yeah, and I've always made it clear, the Fifth Ward page is not always about bad news, okay? Yeah, right. We try right, to put right. out some good stuff too here. Unfortunately, though, we keep getting hit with things that are bad news. <laughs> well, I think the good part is that we love the city and there's good things that are happening and yeah. there's bad things happening and then there's really ugly things happening. And hey, listen, if you live in if you live in the city and you love the city and you want it to come to light, here's where you can find it on Cohoes, uh, the yeah. good, bad, and the yeah. ugly. So yeah. let me start out with a couple of things that I think are really good, right? Yeah. You know that when I was the mayor of the city, the music hall was the focal point for me of starting uh, to, to, to get Ransom Street back up and running to become yeah. a premier street where uh, where it would become a destination, right? Yeah, so we yeah. were lucky enough to put in some Cohoes money into the to the music hall. We were lucky enough to get a nine hundred thousand dollar grant. We put in new windows, new sound system, new chairs, new curtains, and it was really the start of trying to get it up and running. Um, prior to me, my uncle was was um, uh, really smart enough to know that it had a uh, uh, a chance to be an economic engine for the downtown, and he got some painting done. Uh, but the good news is that the current mayor, um, through his uh, his administration, was able to secure about two point five million dollars in grants, uh, yes, specifically yes. for the musical. And I think that yes. is outstanding. You know, yes, the funny yes. thing, Timmy, as you know about grants, it's not what you want; it's what's available at certain times, yes. right? The, the yes. government, uh, the state of New York, usually says hey, we have grants and this time it's for arts and entertainment or it's for downtown business districts yeah. or it's for, you know, sewer work or whatever. And it looks like the last year and, and, and going into this year, uh, there was two and a half million dollars and it's going to fix the roof and some other parts. I mean, what is your understanding about those grants? Well, look at, uh, you know, if you look at Cahos, I mean, we don't have movie theaters. Uh, we don't have very many places to go for entertainment uh, other than, you know, the local bars. But, you know, the Rock the Block is very popular. I actually think it's too short. I think it should go, to, should go a few more weeks or either start a little earlier or run a little bit later. Um, some of the uh, shows in the music hall, um, uh, I enjoy going to see some of those uh, events that they put on there, especially the concerts. So I'd like to just see Cahos thrive. Um, uh, to have some kind of entertainment industry here as well, not just restaurants. You know? Yeah, I think the idea when I started the downtown really was to create this new culture and have a downtown atmosphere and Ransom Street would become the arts and entertainment district, right? We had yeah. restaurants, we had bars, we had we started to rock the block that it became a capital region favorite. We got the music hall that was pretty much closed and, and out of business. Uh, we turned it into a... Uh, number one rated small music venue by the Times Union. Yeah. Um, we were bringing in about 35,000 people a year onto Ransom Street just between Rock the Block, the events that we had uh, all year on the on, on Ransom yeah. Street, and the music hall. So I think it's great. I think I'm really happy to see that the, the current mayor and his administration applied for these grants, got uh, these yeah. grants um, awarded to the city, and I'll be anxious to see because, you know, we got the new windows in. Yeah, we put yeah. the new marquee in. We yeah. did all the uplighting, so when you drove by, you'd see this beautiful building. And now he's got to do some stuff that maybe not, maybe won't won't be as attractive, right? Because it will be like roof and, and, and those kind of repairs, but much needed. What about, what about air conditioning? Is there 
air conditioning in there? Yeah, yeah. We had the air conditioner fixed. We had the uh, we had the elevators fixed, the heaters fixed. Yeah. But but th there's still a lot more that needs to be done. You got to remember yeah. this was an old facility, the fourth fourth oldest active music hall in the country, and it was yeah. shut down for a long time. Yeah. And uh, the parts are old, so hopefully this 2.5 million they'll be able to use to yeah. to do some upgrades. Yeah. And I'm really excited about that. I mean, so, when it was built back in the, what what was it 1878? Oh, it was built a, before yeah. I was born. <laughs> yeah, back in the 1800s. 1800s, late 1800s. So can, the population of the city grew um, into the 19, We had 40,000 people here. I don't and know the exact is, date yeah. that. It became yeah. a music hall because it was a bank for a while. Yeah, it was. and then I think there was a music hall there, and then they encapsulated it, and it was just there and in, in time, right? And then what, the, yeah, the walls well, got we, knocked down, and boom, there's this beautiful music hall. Well, actually, what what happened in in some of the readings I've done is is people didn't really have a lot of faith or trust in banks at that time. So yeah. what they did is they built um, entertainment theaters such as music halls inside the bank. To attract customers, to warn yeah. people up to using the banks and, and stuff like that. so. Uh, that's why you see like the tr over in Troy, Troy yeah. Savings Bank. They have a music hall. We have one. I don't know where the other two are in the country. Uh, <laughs> well, please. there's a lot of them, but we're the fourth oldest active one, right? Right. When right. we got it up and running, we became the yeah. fourth oldest active music hall. They say it's haunted. Um, and, and, and I was going to have this, uh, Holly Brown, we hired to run the musical. Yeah. She was the best in the business. I mean, she just turned it into a, a gem, but uh, I said, Holly, look at a lot of people are interested in these, uh, you know, this, these mediums and the spirits and the afterlife. Yeah. What if we had this thing? It was 25 bucks. We can bring in up to 75 people and they can put down the cots and they can sleep there and we'll bring in these people that summon the spirits and see if there's any real ghosts inside the music hall. And I think their concern was, well, we don't want to take any chances on, on, <laughs> on evil spirits shutting us down. So it never really, it didn't happen the way I, uh, yeah, I, think I, the, I hoped it happened. The woman was a, uh, she played vaudeville or something. Her last name was Tangway. Yeah, Tangway. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was supposed to haunt, haunt the place. Yeah, that, haunt the thing. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I don't. I don't know if it was true. They wouldn't let me have the. Uh, they were afraid that the uh, evil spirits would would come and 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 haunt us for the rest of our lives. But I think that is really one of the good things um, that we have seen over the course of the last three years. To me, there's been some things going on, and again, yeah. I, I I know that the city doesn't have a whole lot. Uh, to do with the grants other than applying for them. Yeah. But if you don't apply for them, if you don't know they're there, and if you don't yeah. do a decent job writing them up, you, you usually don't get them, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm really excited that the city did a great job. Uh, I love the music hall, and yeah. I want to see it flourish. So I'll be I'll be really excited to see, uh, you know, what all the repairs of, of the hall are and, yeah, yeah. and how it reflects on the hall in general. So... Uh, yeah. Good news, uh, good job to the city of Cohoes, and uh, good news, and uh, yeah. I'm really excited about that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, look at uh, moving along here. I want to bring everybody up to speed on uh, what was called the uh, holiday market program. Okay, uh, this is the. So where does us fall under the bad? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The so bad. we had to we had the good. Uh, now let's right. go into the bad, right? So the bad, you know, and, and then the worst is about to come, right? But uh, I'll bring everybody up to speed now. Back in um, in 2022, somewhere around late late spring, uh, early summer, it was pitched to the CLDC, "Hey, uh, let's uh, have a holiday market in a winter, sort of." And they wanted to build these huts and put them on out uh, along certain locations in the city. Most of them were at Remsen Street, Canal Square, Ontario Street by. Uh, the old the uh, Silliman Park, so <clears throat> basically is pitched out as a hey let's spend seven thousand dollars and let's do this, and of course the uh, CLDC said sure we'll give it a shot. Um, Timmy, the, just uh, for the people that are watching, the LDC yep. is a quasi government entity yep. that was created to help spur economic development, right? I mean that's yeah yeah. The, yeah. the, that's their whole uh, existence, which is to be able to do things to help develop a city that cities can't do because they're they're covered by different laws and they, they yeah. relax the laws. Right. So well, just so people know. Yeah. Essentially, what it is, is when we say quasi government, they're 
fully supported by the city of Cajos. I mean, they operate out of city hall and stuff like that, but they're privately run. So you have volunteers that actually privately run that organization for the greater good, and it saves the city a lot of money in, in uh, uh, wages and salaries and benefits. And so kudos to the volunteers that do that work, okay? And you'll see that with several other boards in our, uh, within the city too, okay? So, but th this is a quasi-government board, and so is the uh, IDA, which is the Correct. industrial agency. But don't be so fooled. There are some people that do get paid to, for yeah. those boards. So, yeah, they just so you know, right? Yeah, they are quasi-government because they, they, they were created by the state legislature, and they, they have other rules. Yeah. And one of the benefits, Tim, is that yeah. a city can't really buy property, then sell property. And yeah, the, yeah. The, you know, in order to rebuild yeah. like a downtown, you have to buy property, sell property, get developers. Yeah. So that's yeah. the purpose that's, of the LDC for those who are watching. Right. And that's what they do. So so um, on the uh, holiday market here, the idea was pitched on out that we wanted to do something like that. So it was a, originally a $7,000 plan. OK, now right off the get go, let's do the math. So I ask, OK, so if we're going to build these huts, how many shacks are we going to build? And we said probably about 10 or 12. We end up building 10. So if you have 10 huts, then I said, okay, well, how much is it going to cost to rent these huts? They said, well, $250 for the season. So I'm starting to do the math. And I said, wait a minute, $7,000, and we're only going to get 250 times 10. So that means I would... We're, we're automatically at a $5,000. Yeah, you're losing 5000 before you even start, really. That's great math. I said, okay, so we're losing five grand right off the get-go, but it got worse. See, I got the final numbers um, by FOIA request. Um, you know, Debbie Jakes has been really uh, transparent and helpful. I yeah, good, good egg she is. Yep, I asked for the information, and, you know, she got it to me as quickly as she could. So good for her. Yeah. And here's what I uh, what I, I was actually shocked to see. This was pitched out as a seven thousand dollar program by the secretary, which happened to be Steve Napier, and um, <laughs> economic yeah. development uh, uh, Gurley, director Steve Napier, the same yeah. one, right? Same same one, same guy. And the final cost of this project, based on the numbers, and I have these sheets right in front of me right here. Okay, you're going to be able to see these sheets on the fifth board page soon. Um, we ended up showing out $27,091 for that shit show. Yeah, okay. shit shacks. <laughs> yeah. Right. Brown, ugly shit shacks. And the profit was $1,250. Well, so we're going to give him a raise. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so they, they, they spent $6,000 just to bring in a, a private marketing company called Rise. So the, the, that marketing company, Rise of Wealth, took 6000 right? Tim, i got to tell you a funny story, right? I, just, I mean, because you shake your head that this could be, yeah. that, that, that this could be a, a function of your economic development director, yeah. and then he's also on the uh, LDC, which it's common for you to sit on both. But yeah. the, the, the failure of this guy is, is just, it shines brighter than the lights we have that they just put in throughout the city, right? He's been a failure because... He's not qualified for that job. Everybody yeah. knows it. And and we know it because it was in the newspaper that he got the job for stepping out of the race and not running against Keeler for mayor. So yeah. they throw him into a $70,000 job that is one of the most vital jobs to rebuild in a community yeah. with zero, zero experience. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. experience. No education yeah. in it, never worked in it. He was a political hack. He never had yeah. a job, right? So right. he spends all this money, hard-earned money that the – LDC has, and he builds them shit shacks. Shit and shack. so the funny story is I was told by a couple businesses downtown that they hired this company for 6000 to promote the shit shacks and to pr promote this downtown day to yep. try to bring people in for the vendors. Yeah, like and the they were having run. the Santa Claus run. Yeah. Yeah. And sadly, in Cohoes, yeah. only three Santa Claus is getting to run. And the rest were over in Troy where they didn't pay nothing. Right. Uh, people paid to run over there. Right. And right. Um, and it was a it was an epic failure. And, you know, you can laugh about these things because if you don't, you'd want to cry. Yeah. When I talk to the downtown businesses, they'll tell you right now that uh, there is no uh, nobody helping them. And the city's dead. And it's kind of sad because not long yeah. ago it was 
we were talking about building Driving. parking garages. Yeah. You know, the, the loss on that one project alone, a, a two-month window, the loss the CDLC took was $25,841. And it's okay. hard for them to make money, Timmy, right? Because yeah. they don't just make yeah. money. They have loans yeah. that they loan out to small businesses, and then they try to recoup these loans, and then some people ain't paying them back, yeah. and they're selling some property, and, they, you know, there's there's ways. But they don't just have, like, a unlimited bank account. No, they don't. They get so when you, when you take 26000 and you think about how that could have helped – you know, uh, small businesses in the city themselves or right, who are still struggling or trying to go out there and buy up some properties for better economic development or maybe having some clean up the street days in downtown for the businesses or buy flowers, uh, stuff to spruce up the downtown to help economic right. development. When you yeah. think about that, that is a lot of money that was yeah. just w wasted, wasted on three Santa Clauses and shit shacks. It's and I'm going to tell you a funny story. So I went to the music hall and uh, watched a concert. It was uh, a Kiss tribute band. Had a lot of fun, seen a lot of friends, but we walked past three of those shit jacks yeah. in Canal Square. Yeah. And the guys were out there freezing their ass off. I go, how's business? And the guy looked at me, he said, I haven't made a penny. Do you want to buy something? I said, yeah, I'm going to buy a beer at the music hall because I'm not, I'm not going shopping yeah. in the shit check. And he laughed and he said, well, we won't be here tomorrow. So yeah. even the guys who bought them got a kick out of the fact that yeah. they spent, the city should have gave them their money back. They should have been embarrassed. Yeah, they, that, that's a good thought. I know my sister bought a candle off one of them because she saw, felt so bad for him. Because yeah. He was sitting there freezing his ass off. Yeah, you <laughs> bought a sympathy candle. But, I mean, the city should have said, look, we tried this. We should have known it was going to be a failure. Our city yeah. doesn't have the, the – yeah. the city doesn't have the wherewithal to bring – they don't know how to bring people to the downtown. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know how to make that downtown booming like we had a booming because we had people in places yeah. that understood how to make this uh, city operate. So you yeah. have all these people paying their money. The city should have said, epic failure, take your money back. Let's take our losses. Let's report back to the LDC and tell them it was a yeah. failure. Sorry, we ain't going to do it again. But you know what? Uh, they'll try it again next year because they they, they just they, they do stupid things. There and, need, there, and you know what? Look, at, in, in the end, there needs to be accountability for this. This here, this here wasn't just losing $1,000. This was losing almost... Twenty six thousand dollars. Yeah, okay. you know, you, you know what you can do, Timmy. And we had these ideas, these grand ideas. Yeah, Not yeah. every idea is going to be a success, right? Yeah, well, yeah. but if you were going to do this, the first thing you would do is you would go out and try to sell these things, and say to the LDC, "We need to sell at least X amount." And if we don't, we'll let the people know that we weren't able to put it together. We didn't yeah. have enough vendors, yeah. Yeah. and we're going to just cancel that and try yeah. to come up with another plan. You don't go out there and build these shit shacks, ugly as hell. They look like brown outhouses. They were crooked. They were. I, didn't Don Russell have something to do with them, or am I mistaken? Uh, I I know that he was working on one of them at least. So so because I seen them all yeah. down on on the side of his, his. So whoever put them together weren't. Any, um, they certainly weren't carpenter extraordinaires, let's say. Right, right? they did it. They, the way they were built is so that they could be disassembled and reused. <laughs> yeah, but still, <laughs> you, you could disassemble them and put them together. I used to work with uh, uh, an organization that set up the Christmas houses in Cahos. Them son of a right. bitches were 500 pounds, but we would take them down and put them back every year, and they were beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Right, uh, Bobby Sicucci and John Domel and yeah, and yeah. that that organization, yeah, um, yeah. great pride, put these yeah. things together, made the city look beautiful. Yeah, and 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 now we have the shit shacks that look yeah. like outhouses that are on that TV show when you live up into the away into the Canadian uh, woods. There, what the hell's the name of that show? But no, they uh, look more like a red a redneck. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, it looked like if you, you could have put a pail in there and, and, and cut a hole in it and you could have went by if you had to go to the bathroom because yeah. it was just ugly. And then they paid that girl, what, six grand and she painted some, you know, ho-ho on there or yeah, jingle yeah. bells. They did uh, on the thing here for, for painting the huts, $1,500, yeah. okay, for to paint them. Now, they they also did some uh, other uh, Christmas painting on it. Okay, but no amount of paint was going to make those things look good. <laughs> and then, and you know, the sad part is, why would you paint them brown? No, no. They're supposed can't. to be Chris. They're supposed to be these Christmas huts, and you paint. They look like outhouses, 
Um, yeah. That... And 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 you paint them shit brown. Right. So it really just really yeah. emphasized what they look and, like. And and, uh, and you know the best uh, best thought on it was Bill Springle. He said, "Why didn't they just?" Turn around and make them look like gingerbread houses. <laughs> well, you know, because uh, because again, when you have people in positions, uh, yeah. I mean, the first thing I'd be saying is, if we're going to build them. They got to look like a Christmas hut, Santa's yeah. house. They got to look like something. Yeah, something they can't look yeah. like the outhouses from the Beverly Hillbillies, right? Yeah, it just, exactly. it, 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 you know, it, it's got to be something that you can be proud of. And yeah. you know, you just yeah. take it back to what it was. You, you got inexperience. Um, yeah. The city hasn't had any real solid. Uh, events downtown. Yeah. Uh, I know that mac and cheese, but that's not the city. The city was only uh, asked yeah. if they could come to the city. That was put together yeah. by a very well orchestrated um, yeah. organization. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you're a city taxpayer, you got to ask yourself, yeah. what the hell's going on? How, how can you piss away $27,000 for those shit shacks? And then I got to be honest with you, Tim, yeah. I drove down by the uh, White Street where they're going to put that little park uh, pocket yeah, park, yeah, yeah, something yeah. that we were going to do before yeah. um, we right were finished on Ritson. Yeah, right and right they were just the laying market. on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Laying yeah. In, the, in the water. They disassembled them. Let they them disassembled them. them. Hey, the, at least they got some right. They came apart. Yeah, Sean, but, and, and, and I went there and I took photographs, right? Of They put all the electrical wiring right on a wet ground. Yeah. Okay, yeah. ran them through the window of the building, okay? nowhere near code okay they even plugged in uh, over at um at the canal uh, square park they plugged were they in, still uh, were they still the power from the light posts <laughs> did, did donnie have it well, i don't in? know if, i don't know if donnie russell owned the building <laughs> if but, he did it probably wasn't free or he needed to build the city i was laughing because they have all these kids over there for the christmas show and have to treat yeah. it light right because they yeah. didn't again common sense says you test the tree three or four times because you don't want to do the yeah. countdown with santa and have yeah. half a uh, half the lights go off but light. the problem that the lights on the tree probably didn't go off is because somebody was stealing the power to light the shit shack and so there wasn't enough power to light the whole tree yeah. so you know uh Merry, Merry Christmas to the shit shacks and the shit show that's going on on Ransom Street I feel bad for the businesses though though they have you know I, they, they still reach out to me and I, I don't know why but I'm humble yeah. that they do but when they reach out to me it's all you know Holy shit, Sean! There's no people down here. We've invested all our money. Where's the people? What's happened? And uh, I kind of feel bad for them. You know, yeah. you, you sell them a vision, and I sold them a vision, and what they're getting is a nightmare now. And uh, yeah. so hopefully they'll come up with some better ideas in the in the future, yeah. uh, and they'll be ahead yeah. of the game. To me, one of the things is this city and this administration is always behind the eight ball, right? You you build the shit shacks, you hire all, you get three Santa Clauses yeah. to come, you paid six thousand dollars to promote it. And it all fails rather than, you know, you got to plan to succeed. If you don't yeah. plan, you yeah. fail, right? Yeah. And uh, that's that's kind of yeah. where they are. And to touch on your point, okay, they only had six people rent out these. So they never really even got close to 10 of them getting rented out. So six people came forward. They, they shelled out $250 to rent, rent these things, froze their asses off. Nobody showed up to buy their wares. <laughs> the poor bastards went out to make money on Christmas and they end yeah. up paying the city more than they made. And again, yeah. the city ought to be ashamed and find yeah. out who they are and say, hey, sorry, we didn't do such a great job. Yeah. Pay them back their money because yeah. I'd be embarrassed to, to, to take it. It was to a me. total disaster. And if you're going to uh, do that, we yeah. built a million dollar park. Yeah. With all of 99% uh, of it being paid for by the state, right? So we yeah. got this beautiful Canal Square Park. Why didn't you put everything in Canal Square Park, yeah. have all the huts there, and have a week long of events, Christmas carols, and things that would bring the city people out? Why didn't you have yeah. like this big week, Christmas week, in Canal Square? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't understand it, but they have everything spread out in, in places where I'm like, who the hell is going to go there? Who wants you to know? have the shit shack next to the you know, to the garbage cans that are outside for, you know, some of the businesses. It just didn't make sense to me. Yeah. It was really just, it was convoluted in, in yeah. every sense of the way. You know, look, at I, I made suggestions to the LDC. I said, look, it, it doesn't always have to be about businesses, too. Why don't you do things for the youths of the uh, of the city? 
some of the youth programs, you know, maybe help them out with equipment or, or again, like restocking the pond. The kids love yeah. to go down there. So when we restocked the pond, we had to use yeah. city money, right? Because, yeah. look, in all fairness, there's limitations on what you can use the money for. Yep. It's got to be economic development, right? Okay. So when I was the chairman of the county ledge, I started this program where we would hire all these college kids for the summer. Yeah. Right? And the IDA gave us $50,000 towards this program. And in the county, because it's big enough and they have all kinds of different departments, kids could work at the jail if they wanted to think about being corrections, yeah. sheriffs yeah. if they thought about being cops, Department yeah. of Health. There's all these departments. And somebody complained that the IDA spent money and it wasn't for economic development. Now, we were, all, uh, we were able, I should say yeah. without yeah. stuttering, we were able to use that as we were training them for future economic development jobs yeah. uh, and business. So we were able to use it. You got to be able to spin it so that it falls within them categories. But yeah. yeah, you can help the youth. How about having youth summer job training Yeah, and use Something. it for economic development because businesses and co-hosts are looking for people yeah. with skills so we can yeah. teach them skills. Yeah. Having Santa Claus running around with his tights on and uh, having somebody painting brown shit houses. For twenty-seven thousand dollars, just seems like a bad well, idea to me. I, so, I would look at those things as Napier high rises. Okay, if you could stack them one on top of another. <laughs> okay. Well, hey Timmy. So we talked about the good, right? Let's I go think it's really next, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's wonderful that we got some grants in the in the music hall is gonna see uh, see some yeah. shiny growth, um, yeah. and having uh, some infrastructure yeah. taken care of. That's you know, a hundred years needed. Uh, we talked about the bad, which is Steve Napier and his shit shacks and Santa Claus and $27,000 of wasted money. And, you know, I think we can all say that it was poor planning. If yeah. you don't plan, you're going to fail. And that wasn't yeah. a plan. Yeah. That was just, uh, and I don't even know how that would, why would that come out of economic development? That should be coming out of parks and recreation because it's a uh, yeah, special yeah. event anyway. So I don't know why he would even be in charge of it but you could see it's an epic failure and and i want to move on to yeah. the ugly right yeah. because i think it's ugly i don't know if it's uglier than the shit shacks well, but it's it, ugly it's, it's ugly in the sense tonight, right that it's but, public safety yeah and it's and it hit the uh it hit the airwaves tonight on tv6 and we're going to talk about that real quick and it's all cohos we're not we're very soon not to have any ambulance service here. I think, what, t 9 o'clock tonight, maybe? So, so you know, f first let me just kind of give a quick uh, lowdown because people already know this, right? Because there, yeah. there was a battle going on between the mayor of the city who made some campaign promises that he refused to fulfill. And flyers were going out about the, the staffing issues in the fire department. Yep. And $2, how... $2,000 for them. Right, two thousand dollars. City paid for to, to 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 defend themselves. The the fire department's been screaming that Troy Ambulance was going to be sold, that they're on the market to be sold. Yeah. So we knew months ago that the Troy Ambulance service was no longer going to be available to answer calls. Now Bobby Signoracci, who I always thought was one of the great mayors of our city, he had the wherewithal to bring the ambulance in. So that ambulance and Troy Ambulance has been here. I came on in 89 and they were already here. I yeah. happened to work for the ambulance at the same time I was a firefighter. Yeah. And so uh, the ambulance was vital because we provided great service as first responders, but we can't transport, right? Yeah. So the ambulance came and transported them after the fire department got there, uh, took care of them, got them stabilized, and then they would be transported to the hospital. What I do know based on the flyers and the arguments and the Facebook posts is that this is months in the making. Now, all of a sudden, at the witching hour, you have the mayor of the city. And this is why I tell you that it, it is bullshit. Yeah. And I believe it's bullshit because they're not doing anything to try to fix problems. They fly by the seat of their pants because they're not experienced and they have no clue what they're doing. And this is an example. So the mayor comes out tonight and says, oh, my God, we've been in negotiations for months. And I thought... They were going to do it for free. And that that's the new company. I think it's called yeah, yeah. Ambulance X or yeah, something. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. I, I, I stand corrected. I, I don't really remember the name. But what we did know is that that company doesn't do emergency transports. They bought up the ambulance companies 
and their certificate of needs here so they can transport people like to dialysis from nursing homes to hospitals. They don't do emergency transports because there's really the money in those has shrunk over the years because the government doesn't want to pay and it's Medicaid, Medicare, uh, and there's 40 to 50 percent don't pay at all because they don't have insurance. So now we have a situation where for months we knew the ambulance was going to be gone. Yep. Then they, they realized the company that bought it wasn't a transportation for emergency service company. The mayor said, well, we've been in talks for months, and I thought it was free. And then they tell me it's $600,000. And I want to know what kind of negotiations they are. How can you be the mayor of the city and say, I thought it was going to be free. And at 9 o'clock, the ambulance company that we have now is gone. Yeah. And you're scrambling. So you went from having a free ambulance here because the other one was free because it was set up that way and they would get all of the calls where they would make their money. Yep. And now you got a company coming in saying we want 50000 for the month and we want 600000 from the year. The mayor comes out of the state of the city and says, I was negotiating in good faith. I was negotiating with this ambulance company and I thought it was going to be free. Well, what the freak was being said at these meetings that it went from free to $600,000? That's yep. what I want to know. Well, keep in mind too, okay, and I, and not to get off topic, but when he he came on out and spent eighty thousand dollars for these electric charging stations, six of them throughout the city, he also put that out there. Oh, it's free to the taxpayers, free. But we shelled out eighty thousand bucks over ten years for him. He, his his understanding of free, okay is a misunderstanding yeah he doesn't know what free means yeah well unless, I, you unless, know, the, it's, unless it's dpw up working on his property <laughs> <laughs> i always <laughs> tell people all the time you got to be careful free because even the cheese and the mouse trap is free right, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but you're going to pay a, a pretty big price if you're a mouse right, right but right. but it it, it 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 it's funny in the sense that if you don't laugh at these things you you, you just shake your head but tell me how the mayor of a city who was supposed to be this guru of public safety because he was a state trooper for all these years. And, and he's trying to work with the fire department, but yet all he's trying to do is take away their benefits, right? Yeah, because yeah. now they're in a piss and match. He's in a vindictive prick. He really is because yeah. here he is. As soon as, as soon as they don't agree with him, he wants to cut their hours, cut their pay, cut yeah. their health care, yeah. low, you know, bring them down to the lowest staffing in the history and then yeah. spend $3,000 of pa- taxpayer money to send out this flyer defending his position of why he's doing all these things, right? And it was a shitty position because at the end of the day, four firemen can't be better than five. Having an ambulance company that doesn't uh, transport people when they're sick ain't as good as an ambulance that's transporting people when they're sick. And sitting down with somebody and having negotiations means you at least walk away with some kind of understanding after four months. Like, hey, they want too much money. I can't get them the budge. We can't afford that kind of money. We have to look at other alternatives but this is public safety why weren't other alternatives being looked at the whole time you're in negotiations in the event that they fail now he says well thank you to to uh bethlehem thank you for um you know albany Mm -hmm. thank you for that's all good and well except they're a long ways away from the city of cajos yeah yeah right so he should yeah gilderland Gilderland. so so we should have been in the if I knew about it, and I'm out of touch with the fire department, I've been retired for six yeah. years. If you knew about it, if residents who stopped me today and asking me how the fire department works with its ambulance knew about it, yeah. then everybody knew about it because it's been on Facebook and the battle's been on the news and they've been on the union's website and Keeler's trying to defend his position with, with $2,000, $3,000 mailers. And now I would be embarrassed to say, I don't know what the hell is going to happen now because, you know, they just dropped a bombshell on me. But I've been negotiating with him for four months and I thought it was free. That doesn't tell me that's negotiations. That's flying by the seat of your pants and getting yeah. caught with your pants down. Well, what, keep in mind, I mean, when he ran for office, he uh, made it very clear public safety was his number one priority. He promised to open the uh, Belize Street Firehouse 24-7. Really didn't get that done at all. It's not. And look at he. The first thing he did was hired a uh, public safety commissioner. All right, it was a seventy thousand dollar a year uh, job. Um, brought him in. Six months later, phased the guy on out. Now, on Proposition Two, the recent vote here in November, 
the people of Tahoe's authorized the create the position of public safety commissioner. Where is he? Okay, we still don't have that. So he 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 talks the talk, but he doesn't walk the walk. Yeah, well, they hired a public safety commissioner just to fire the fire chief that's been here or the police chief that's been here for 50 yeah, years, right? Yeah, so right. shame on you that you hire somebody because you don't have the balls to tell the guy that you yeah. want him to leave, right? Right, um, and that was Jim Ward. Jim Ward did the yeah, thing. Yeah, and Jimmy's, right? a, I, I like Jimmy. He's a decent yeah. guy, but hey, yeah. hey, they offered him a lot of money to come in and do what he does, right? So yeah. he comes in and he tells them, uh, hey, you got to go, you got to go, and he starts pushing people out. Yep. Um, at the end of the day, when Keeler used to say, if I get involved, if I win the election, I'm never going to get involved in police matters, he's been in one, every single one, up to up his to elbow. His yeah, I mean, up, the, up the bottom up. line is, you know, you're full of shit. You can't separate the two. And I used to say yeah. that to people all the time. Don't yeah. say what you, what you don't know. And it's obviously this. He doesn't know nothing about the fire department. He's put people's lives at risk. Yeah. The fire department is working at the lowest levels it's ever worked. Everybody with any experience, is, I think yeah. they just had seven people bail out and leave because he's trying to decimate. I mean, he may, he's got a hundred thousand dollar year pension, making eighty thousand as the mayor. So there's a hundred eighty thousand. He must yeah. have a boatload of money because his house is as big as the firehouse, right? He bought yeah. up all this property up on. Up on uh, Western right Avenue, right ninety thousand dollars for a lot across for the street. He wants yeah. to buy it, so he's got a lot of money. And what's he do? Because he can't get what he wants, instead of saying I'm in negotiations, he just attacks the fire department and, and tries to yeah. beat him down. The yeah. fire department yeah. will be here long after he's gone. Yeah, they will continue to risk their lives and help the citizens long after this guy's gone. Yeah, and the only thing that you can hope for is that because. This guy's negotiation means he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He doesn't even know that the ambulance company wants money. Just tells you there was no negotiations, or if yeah. there was, he wasn't part of them. Yeah. He's an invert. He doesn't even really talk. He doesn't engage with anybody. You can't figure it out. But here's the thing that pisses me off about this, because I was yeah. a fireman, and I, I know what it's like when, when you don't know uh, what's going to happen. The fire department, okay, yeah, yeah. at 5 o'clock tonight has no clue who the ambulance is going to be, who they're going to call for help, who they're going to work with. Do they have the same kind of training? Do they know how to work with each other? This is public safety, right? This yep. isn't like, you know, you, you go out and say we're going to plant flowers. There's policies, procedures. There's understanding how each each person works. If somebody's having a yep. heart attack, if they're, yep. if they're you know, if they're having some other major medical, how are we going to do this in tandem, right? Yeah. They don't even know. This guy doesn't even tell them what's going on they didn't know about the negotiations and you know what they said here's what we found out we watched the news and it said cohoes is in an ambulance crises and we thought it was going to be free and they want six hundred thousand. and they just shake their freaking heads well, and that, they don't know what yeah. to do tonight and they yeah. still don't know what to do right. now now just uh two years ago there was an article in the, in the newspaper that, that said we got three thousand and three million dollars in COVID relief Okay, I don't know if we got that money, and if we did, where did it go? And secondly, Keeler also said that, hey, he's accustomed to uh, uh, operating and running a $100 million budget well, a year a with the state. But he yeah. said it. Okay, so $100 million, he can manage that kind, but he can't manage $600,000 for an ambulance service, or <laughs> even, <laughs> even less. Yeah. yeah. Timmy, just remember, during a campaign, people feed you with bullshit. First of all, yeah. he's in the state of New York. They don't make the budget, right? Yeah. The governor's office right. makes all the budgets. Right. He doesn't oversee anything. The hiring comes from the second floor, which yeah. is the governor's office. Yeah. And what he's told is, you know, we have 10 openings and and how much does that cost? And he'll say, well, that's a million dollars. And they'll make sure the numbers plug in right. That's the whole that's that's whole different ball game yeah. than understanding how to run a city. And it's clear you've seen over the course of three years, the city has been run. And I'm not saying that because I'm not the mayor, because yeah. uh, there's many that have, have run it before yeah. me and the many that will run it after us. But he, he is one of the, the ones that I think really failed to deliver on anything he yeah. tried to promise. And, and the fire yeah. department is concerning to me. So if you're listening to this as a citizen, you don't know what happens tonight. We don't have an ambulance in Cahos. Yeah. That's where we're at right now. And if they show up at nine o'clock, now I'm told that one of the lieutenants got a phone call today and said, hey, you'll have somebody there at nine o'clock. What do you mean? Who, what is somebody? Are they ALS? Are they BLS? What kind of equipment do they have? Do they have yeah. defibrillators? Do they have, 
you know, can they intubate yeah. people? Do they have uh, Narcan? Do they, are we handling that? Who's handling that? How's that yeah, all going to yeah. be done? Those things have been uh, delivered in a zero message yeah. as of 530. It's nine o'clock. So who knows? I, I'm going to text the person that I, I spoke to or the yeah. several people and see what happened. Um, but my gut tells me once again, fly by night, terrible yeah. job managing the city, terrible job managing um, public safety. And when we talk about uh, good, bad and ugly, it doesn't get any uglier than this. How about at least just keeping your firefighters in the loop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because you don't like the union because they took you on because you're stealing their livelihood, you treat them like shit. So, yeah. hey, that's you know, where we're at, yeah. Timmy. You know, Sean, you and I, we get our information uh, from whistleblowers, from people on the inside that got things to say. And I'd like to just put it on out there. Invite people to come on and contact us. You can come on the podcast. You can say what you want to say. Um, it can't just be you and me, okay, putting out, out the word. We want to engage the whole community here. Okay. Yeah, the, the problem is when you have a vindictive prick who's who goes after yeah. you, they're afraid to come on, right? I just, yeah, that's right. I, the truth lies in political bullshit. We just did yeah. a um, a uh, a podcast about yeah. the vaccinations, right? Where the yeah. governor won't bring people back who are unvaccinated. Yet Fauci, who was the guy yeah. who yeah. everybody lived in and and he followed him to the end of the world, yeah. Yeah. has said it doesn't matter if you have the vaccination or you don't, because you'll still spread it equally. Underscore, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. But she she uh, she's keeping these people out of work. You know why? Because they're vindictive. Yeah, yeah. Because you challenge their authority. I know what it's like if you challenge them, they're going to come after you. You just yeah. got to be able to say, I'll roll with the punches. But I, yeah. I I could not get one nurse on. They A hundred of them called me. They wanted me yeah. to tell their story, but they were petrified to come on. I yeah. can see why you wouldn't come on with this guy because yeah. he's vindictive. I agree. And, and you know, he'll go after. But I, I, I hope that we can do a podcast every two weeks. I hope it's fun. I hope yep. people like it because it's, it's about hometown shit. And we can talk about yep. uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly because there are some good things. There's some bad yep. things and there's some ugly things. Yep. Uh, I don't know what could be uglier than public safety and putting people's lives yep. at risk. Um, but uh, we can have people on just to talk about businesses. We can talk yep. about anything they want. I thought, you know, part of our uh, us paying taxes were – was to be able to have an ambulance, uh, uh, not only on top of fire protection, but, you know, a medical emergency. I thought that was just part of Listen, it. I was in the works with having an ambulance that we were going to run right here from our city yep. in cooperation with another entity. Yep. They were going to give us the ambulance. They were yep. going to give us a paramedic. We were going to put one firefighter on, so there was always a paramedic and the MT. We were going to pay them X amount of money. We were going to cover the cost of their paramedics out of the in our firemen out of the profit that you make yeah. from the ambulance, mostly from private insurance, Medicaid, yeah. Medicare. We would have made a profit, not a huge profit, but it looked like we could have made between one hundred and fifty yeah. and two hundred thousand a year, and we would have never had to worry about it because it would have been our ambulance stationed right here. Uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't get to that point, so uh, yeah. hopefully that 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 ambulance company. Uh, we'll pick up the phone and, and let them know what we had worked out um, because it would have been great. It would have helped to keep the yeah. firefighters staffed. It would have had a paramedic here 24-7, an ambulance. Uh, let's just hope they do the right thing. Well, I'm going to wrap with one last uh, thought. I'd much rather see us have purchased maybe an ambulance than a $250,000 backhoe. Okay, yeah, you know, that's what we just did. Yeah, listen to me. I, I, as a former mayor, I understand you got to be yeah. well rounded because, yeah. you, you know, you have to be able to address every need, right? I, yeah. I for one, understand putting an ambulance in the fire department is a difficult proposition. Something you can't yeah. do overnight. You got to get a yeah. certificate of need. State's got to approve it. There's a yeah. long process, right? Yeah. Um, but my, my, my issue is that that process has not even been discussed. Knowing yeah. for months and months and months yeah, yeah. they were going to have this happen. And I believe that the current administration is being disingenuous when they tell you yeah. that it fell on their lap today. Yeah. Because you can't tell the public you were in negotiations for four months and you had such great negotiations that you thought you were getting an ambulance for free and they yeah. thought it was over half a yeah. million dollars in payments. Yeah. Yeah. That tells yeah. me what the hell did you talk about in these negotiations? So I'm really, I'm really disappointed because I think we got sold a bill of goods 
I hope the people enjoy our podcast, yeah. Tim. Okay, uh, and I thank you uh, for bringing me on. I'm well, I, I thank you for bringing me on. Uh, let me just let everybody reiterate, right? Uh, Truth, Lies, and Political Bullshit, working with Fifth Ward, two podcasts, local out of Cohoes, really delivering a lot of good messages, both growing really well. And uh, we decided to do one podcast every two weeks to talk about um, the city of Cohoes, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's hope there's more good than there is bad. And let's hope there's only a little bit of bad compared to the yeah. ugly things. But we're going to put this podcast up on the Fifth Ward page and put it up on my uh, Facebook page. And then you're going to post it to your YouTube and yep. you're going to post it to rumble we'll and we'll put the rumble. links up to both yep. of those places where you can go yep. and watch it. Right. Yep. So, Hey Tim, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I, you always crack me up and you got all the information. And I, I always tell people, Timmy Thibodeau knows more about you than you know about yourself. <laughs> so, Hey Tim, thanks for jumping on. Okay. And uh, I appreciate you letting me jump on. And yep. we'll see you in uh, two weeks for uh, our second podcast of Cohoes, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Oh, good, uh, night. good night, everybody. And good night. Uh, hey, call us, right? Email us, Sean Morris Podcast at gmail.com. Hit us up on Facebook, Messenger. If you have any topics you want to discuss, right, Timmy? Yeah. They can call you. How do they get a hold of you? Fifth well, Ward page? Right, they can get right through me in a Fifth Ward page. Send me a private message through there. I do have the Fifth Ward email. Uh, which is the fifth ward at nicap.rr.com. Yeah, okay. so anybody who wants to either come on the show, be anonymous, talk about things you want to hear, give us a call, and uh, we'll have fun just uh, putting yeah. them out there. And look, hey, Tim. People contact me, okay. Uh, I, I know they're scared and afraid or whatever. We don't release who contacts us, okay. But I do vet my sources. So so when, when uh, someone comes our way and they say, hey, look at this and look at that, look at that, I'm going to protect our sources, and uh, we're going to vet the information. Okay? Yeah, uh, again, and I think it's good. important for everybody to know that even though we had our first podcast tonight, we did a lot of time looking at the numbers and talking to the people involved. Yep. And uh, we ain't going to come on and do a podcast about our own personal opinions. Well, you know, Sean Morris can't help it. Sometimes I'll share mine. Yep. And I'm sure Timmy will share his. But everything that we do is backed up by uh, uh, by um, the Red data. Rich. And, uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the references and the people. So, hey, everybody, let's back it up with this. I'll see you later. Timmy, I'll see you later. And thanks for joining Cohoes, the good, okay. the bad, and the ugly. Timmy's got to go make the intro to this now. So yeah. uh, we'll, t we'll talk soon. Thanks, Tim. Yep. Yep. Bye now.